Right, let's go through this heavy metal 60 day protocol. But before I do, I just want to highlight when we talk about protocols, protocols are useful in that they serve as a guide. But don't start using them at the expense of not seeing every client as the individual that they are, because not every protocol is going to suit every client. You've got to gauge your client, you've got to gauge their needs, you've got to consider their, how sensitive they are, consider their lifestyle, how easily can they incorporate something like this. So it's about using it as a guide, but always treating the individual. Okay, so we're doing this over 60 days. And you know, one of the important things ideally is we'll remove the source of heavy metals. And I guess it would be good to add in there, well, how does someone know this heavy metals to be removed? Um, you know, you might establish it by or make an assumption. Now, I know it's not a good idea just to assume things. However, if someone's presenting with symptoms that are not symptoms that would classify a trip to, to a doctor or the emergency department, but they're really not well, you know, they can't think straight, maybe there's problems with mood, anxiety, etc. And you determine in the course of the consultation that they've probably had fairly high exposure to heavy metals, then realistically, you know, doing a detox sort of protocol, heavy metal detox protocol like this isn't going to hurt them. Um, the other aspect is that you can go and get tested for heavy metal toxicity. Mercury, for example, can be tested via blood, urine and hair analysis. The issue with heavy metal testing is that when it comes to bloods and urine, it doesn't always reflect what has actually deposited and stored in the tissue. So it will give a good indicator if someone's had acute exposure. But if we're looking at exposure over a period of time, which is often the case, then it's not really a true reflection of what is stored in the body. And that's where the hair analysis can give a much better indication. But where possible, remove the source of the heavy metals. And think about it, even deodorants. Deodorants, if they're antiperspirants, you know, commonly sold deodorants and they don't say otherwise on the label, then they contain aluminium and that aluminium can be absorbed via the skin. Um, you know, maybe you've looked at your client's diet and gone, well, gee, it's nice that you're, you're eating lots of oily fish, but you're having it every day, twice a day. I would suggest it's too much that they're starting to accumulate heavy metals. Um, think about if you are including fish, where is it sourced from? So all these considerations about what can be removed. It might be the person's work environment. You can get industrial exposure to heavy metals. And I mean, in that instance, it's a little more difficult. You've kind of got to look to your client and, and see if you can guide them to, to finding a different job. But I mean, they can't just give up their job. So that's kind of a process that you help them work through. So remove that source of heavy metal, if at all possible. Now, throughout the 60 day protocol, one, they've got to be drinking plenty of filtered water. Okay, then ideally three Epsom salt baths a week. I mean, they can have more if they wish. So using sort of half to a kilo of Epsom salts in the bath and then dry skin brush. So going around with that dry skin brushing for five minutes every morning. Let's just get the lymphatic circulating. We're trying to you know, what we're really trying to do is get these heavy metals out of the tissues and it's such that they can then be chelated and removed from the body. So on days 1 to 14, what you're going to do with your client is ensure that those pathways of elimination are nice and clear, that the bowels are working well, that the liver is working well. And this is a really important aspect. You know, it's really easy to put someone onto a detox, either a heavy metal detox or a liver detox. Well, if that person isn't producing enough bile, for example, how, how are those detoxified byproducts going to be carried away? They won't be, so they'll recirculate and the liver will have to go through the process again. So we always want to ensure good bile function. And a way of doing that is to increase bitter foods in the diet because bitter foods, you know, your rocket, your endive, your dandelion greens, 
stimulate the liver to produce bile. So we want to get that bile flow happening so that the bile is there to carry away the detoxified products. Um, turmeric is a great herb as well to add into your meals. That will get, get the liver producing bile and it helps the gallbladder to release bile. Um, the other thing that you know we of course want to be doing is ensuring that that there's that plenty of fluids because bile you're going to have to have fluids to add into the bile as well as to carry those byproducts of detoxification away so we'll work on the liver now what i'll do is i'll go through a suggested liver detox a little bit later at this point, just recognize that you're going to work on supporting the liver and, and flushing through the kidneys for the first 14 days. Now, you're gonna include chlorella tablets. And yes, if you wish, this could be exchanged for spirulina. They're both really good chelators. And there is a dosage regime on the different days from day 15 on outlined. Remember to, to be open to being a little bit flexible if those dosages are proving a bit too much for your client. Most people will tolerate it okay, but if someone's really failing off, we, we can expect when you start working on the liver, you know, a little bit of those detoxy type effects, a little bit headachey maybe, a little bit nauseous, or the bowels might get a little bit looser. If it's a little bit, that's okay. If it's impacting their, their sort of ability to get on through their day, then just pull it back a little bit. Then we're also going to include the detox smoothie. And again, you can find other variations on this, but there is a suggested recipe. What I would highlight is particularly important in the recipe is of course coriander, because we want the coriander to bring those stored heavy metals out then either you know we can add in some spirulina or if you've decided to use spirulina tablets then add in chlorella as as a difference put in a handful of dolls so that's a seaweed filtered water and then blueberries is a great idea it's got wild blueberries there they're even more more concentrated in antioxidant nutrients than standard blueberries so to have antioxidant in there is really important when you're detoxing the heavy metals. And then the banana is kind of primarily there to improve taste and flavor. It doesn't necessarily have to be in there. That's a suggestion to make it more palatable. Depends on your client. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe below so you don't miss any future content. To learn more about CNM or its courses, head to www.naturopathy.com hyphen uk.com